How? I I don't even have words. How did this mother ever get in here? It's huge. I'm scared. I don't know how. I know I gotta kill it. I'm scared. I don't wanna. It's, it's big. Oh my god. It's huge. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know. What if it runs? I'm, <laughs> I'm panicking. One, two. Okay. Is it dead? Is it dead? Don't. <laughs> I guess that's one way to start a video. I missed you guys, I really did. Um, I'm still working, okay, so let me backtrack a minute. Um, I had a live stream maybe like four or five days ago um, and I kind of explained why it's taking longer for me to put out videos, but I wanted to recap that for people that weren't able to watch the live stream. I took the live stream down because I've heard that leaving live streams up that are long live streams, um, can negatively impact future video. I don't know why. I don't know what YouTube does, but I took down the live stream. But I want to tell you guys about um, why it's taking me longer to put out videos. And I also want to show you all the equipment that I use when I go ghost hunting. And I'm actually going to leave links down below of where you can get that equipment because people ask me where I get it from. And I also want to show you um, kind of like some of my favorite pieces of evidence that I've captured with that equipment. Does that sound like a good idea? Should we show them how we catch ghosts? Should we show them? Ew, rude. Should we show them? Should we do it? Should we show them how to catch ghosts? Um, but real quick, uh, this isn't gonna take long, I promise, because I know a lot of people get bored with the talking. So um, just real quick, the reason it's taking me longer um, to put out videos is because I'm taking more time editing them and um, especially with the video that I'm filming right now it's on monsters and I have to go to a couple different locations to film it so um, that's why it's taking longer in between videos because I just want to put more effort into them and I want to make them really really good um, I'm <laughs> it's kind of like the Shane Dawson effect kind of you know like I don't know, he's just raised the bar so much and what people want to watch and the um, like kind of editing that people expect. And, you know, I just want to up my bar a little bit too. So that's why it's taking me a little bit longer, but I'm filming this video today just so that there's like a filler video, something for you guys to watch because I miss you and I feel bad that there hasn't been anything out recently. But just know I am filming the monster video. It's just taking a little bit longer, but I think you guys are gonna like it. And I'm going this coming weekend to film a collab with Cryptid Hunter, and then I'm also filming a collab with Caitlyn Jane the same weekend. So there'll be two collabs coming in the monster video in the future. All right. I'm still kind of shook about that spider. And I'm sitting on the floor right now, so I'm like, Jesus Christ, if one crawls on me, I'm gonna fucking flip. I have all my equipment next to me. I'm going to go through it. I'm also going to leave the links down below to where you can find this equipment. I think that's one of the most popular questions I get is um, where can I find the spirit dice or where can I buy a spirit box? Where can I buy dowsing rods? So I want to leave all that information for you guys down below so that at the end of this video if you want to go pick up a spirit box you know where to get it. If you want dowsing rods you know where to get it. But just putting this out there, you don't need all this equipment to go ghost hunting or to catch great evidence. You could just go out with your cell phone and catch great evidence that way. Your cell phone records video so you can catch a video proof of ghosts. Um, you can record voice memos so you could get those EVPs. It takes pictures so of course you can take those selfies of the ghosts. So you really don't need all this equipment. Um, I just like to have different tools um, and ways to communicate so that's why I have it. And and I've just kind of collected it through time, but just don't feel like you have to go out and buy this equipment to go out and investigate. So I'm gonna start with dowsing rods. Um, I've used them a couple times. I believe there's only one time where they have actually moved for me, and that was when I went to, um, I think it was when I went to the Old West Cemetery. Um, they moved slightly for me. Every other time that I've used them, they haven't really moved. When you're using dowsing rods, you usually hold them out in front of you and you ask the ghosts to cross them if the answer is yes or move them apart if the answer is no. 
or vice versa, you know, it could be move them apart for yes and cross for no. It really, it doesn't matter as long as you let the spirit know what you want them to do. While using these, you want to make sure to stay pretty still. And if you're outside, make sure it's not windy because if it is, um, these move pretty easily and you can get some inaccurate responses. So just keep that in mind when you're using the dowsing rods. This specific pair that I have, um, I have gotten on Etsy. I'll leave the link to this person's shop down below. They don't always have this specific kind here with um, the, the crystal here. I believe they change out their inventory every now and then. So um, you just have to keep going back to look to see if there's um, a pair that you like in stock. But um, if you just search dowsing rods on Amazon, I think um, some really basic ones come up there too. But I'll leave the link to the Etsy shop down below where I got these. And I'll also insert the clip of me using these at the Old West Cemetery so that you guys can kind of see them in action and how they do move um, if a potential spirit is manipulating them. Can you push these together if you're here? Make them cross? That's the first time I've ever had them cross. Moving on to the next piece of equipment, it is the laser grid. Now this um, specific laser grid or pen, it came with a little stand that you just put this in and it props it up kind of like a tripod and you shine it onto a wall so that if a spirit or shadow or something moves through the grid, you have a visual of it. Um, when we went to the Bellamy Mansion, I actually caught a really weird kind of anomaly that moved through the light, which was really cool. But um, this specific one I got at ghoststop.com. I believe that's the name, .com or .org, something like that. The website's called Ghost Stop, but again, I'll leave it linked down below. And um, it's actually, I think it was fairly inexpensive for this laser grid. I really do like the piece of evidence that I caught using this laser grid at the Bellamy Mansion. So um, I will put that in in just a minute, but just know that um, this is available on Ghost Stop and I will leave the link down below if you want to pick it up. So the next piece of equipment is an EMF detector. And to be honest, I do not use this as often as I should. I don't know, for some reason, I just find it to be kind of boring. Um, I like, I don't know why. I just don't, I don't use it that much. I don't really like it. But a lot of investigators do use it because it said that spirits or ghosts within the area can manipulate electromagnetic frequencies and make this light go from green to red. I don't know. The re I'll, I'll tell you one of the reasons why I do not use this as much as because we have so many electronics around us when we are investigating, like my camera, my cell phone, um, spirit box, ovulus. I feel like sometimes you can get a false reading on this, even being in a hotel where there's a lot of electricity or, I don't know. So I feel like this sometimes can get give you a false reading. So I don't use it as often for that reason. But if you do want an EMF detector, they're really common on Amazon. I'll leave the link, of course, down below so that you can pick up an EMF detector if you want. I really don't have any clips to show you of me using this because I haven't used it and gotten really great responses, so. So the next piece of equipment is one of my favorite pieces of equipment, and it is one that everybody knows about. It is the Spirit Box. Now the Spirit Box is one of my favorite because you can get such immediate responses from it. So what this does is it rapidly scans through radio stations. Um, it's supposed to be detuned so that it doesn't pick up like popular radio stations, but I'll tell you, sometimes you do get radio station interference. So you wanna be careful when you're using this that you're not just picking up radio signals. So you wanna ask very specific questions when you're talking to spirits and you want to see if you get an intelligent or a specific response back. So I'm gonna show you one of my favorite responses I've gotten while using the spirit box and you'll see how it's very specific to what we were doing at that time. It was from the Bliska Axe Murder House and we were in the living room rolling the ball back and forth and as we we're rolling the ball, um, we got a voice come through the spirit box and it said, catch it. Gotcha. 
So that's one of the pieces of evidence that I'm talking about that would be very specific to what you're doing and would probably be a good indication that there is a spirit possibly communicating with you. You can get this spirit box either on Amazon or you can also get it at Ghost Stop, um, the website that I get a lot of my paranormal investigation equipment from. So I will link that down below if you want to pick up a spirit box. Okay, this is an obulus. Um, I don't use it as much as I should, especially for what I paid for it. I think this was about $500. And um, I don't use it that much because I, the past couple times that I have used it, I've gotten zero responses from it. Like it's on and it's dead silent, like nothing comes through. But this has a dictionary stored in it and spirits or ghosts are supposed to be able to manipulate this device and go through the dictionary inside so that the words are spoken to you. Um, kind of like, it kind of is like a spirit box, but it doesn't have that loud white noise, static noise in the background. It will just spit out the word. Um, and again, you want to make sure that you're getting intelligent responses while you're using it. I think the only real good piece of evidence that I caught with it is while we were at the Whaley house and, um, I was talking to one of the ghosts and, or one of the spirits and I got my name through this. So I think that was one of my favorite pieces of evidence that I got while using an ovulus. Do you like the Christmas decorations that they put in the house for you? <gasps> oh my God. It just said, it said Mike slower. Again, the Obulus is one of those pieces of equipment that can be picked up at Ghost Stop. I will leave it linked down below with all the other equipment. So the next piece of equipment is probably the one where I get asked the most, where did I get it from? And it is the Spirit Dice. And I got them from a company called McBain's. He's actually a smaller company. I believe I'm located right here in Southern California. I um, first came into his products when I went to, uh, what was it, Midsummer Scream, which is a Halloween convention. Uh, but he does have a website, so if you want to pick up your own spirit dice, I'll leave his website down below so that you can go check him out. He sells a lot of other um, like divination tools and stuff like that. But inside um, the little container is a bunch of dice and they have letters on them so when you ask the spirits to communicate with you they're supposed to spell out the words or the responses i think um another great piece of evidence that i captured while using these was at the bellamy mansion we got a lot of appropriate responses while using them during the investigation there i asked one of the spirits how many children he had, and I got the appropriate response while using these. I also asked how the house was almost destroyed and got the appropriate response. Something happened in this house in the 70s, and it almost destroyed the house. What happened? What's the word we're looking for? <laughs> Fire. Oh, I was looking at Hurricane. I was like, I'm getting there. <laughs> you didn't read the walls, Blake? I've been too busy. <laughs> said John and then I asked what happened to the house burn very neat piece of equipment to use I don't see it being used very often but if you like I said if you want to pick up your own I will leave his link down below also if you do not want to carry this big um, thing around with you I also have gotten a second little bag of spirit dice through um, a seller on Etsy they, um, I think it comes with nine dice in it, which is a lot more travel friendly, I guess. Um, but it's really good quality also. So I will leave um, this vendor's link in the description. Also, if you want something a little bit more compact and travel friendly. 
only a couple more pieces to go and then we're done. I'm sorry. I hope you guys are finding this interesting and I'm not really boring. Okay, up next is a pendulum. And to be honest, I do not have a website for this because they're very, very common. You can go on Etsy, you can go on Amazon. If you just type in pendulum, you'll find a pendulum. Also, the board that I got with it, if you just type in pendulum board, you will find a whole bunch of different types of pendulum boards. There's a couple different ways to use this piece of equipment. Um, some people will just ask the spirits to move it forward and back for yes, side to side for no, or vice versa. Or you can use um, a spirit board. You hover the um, crystal over the top, you ask a question and see if it moves towards yes, towards no, or whatever the answer may be. I haven't used um, a pendulum very often. I don't, I don't know why I haven't used it that much. I only used it once and it was when I was doing the Instagram followers control my ghost hunt. Um, but I used it, I think I was using night vision when I did it, but yeah, I haven't used it too often, but it's another piece of equipment that I use from time to time. Like I said, this is the only equipment that will not be linked down below, um, specifically because I actually bought this stuff in Salem. I don't, I don't have a link for you guys to go buy that, but if you just search on Amazon or Etsy, pendulum or pendulum board, you'll find it. The last piece of equipment that also I do not use very often is a spirit board or Ouija board, whatever you want to call it. And no, they are not evil. And if you come across a channel that immediately tells you they are evil, you should just unsubscribe right away. <laughs> just being honest. Um, although people like to paint these as an evil, demonic object, they are not. It is just a communication tool to communicate with spirits. Could you possibly communicate with something bad? Yes, but I believe that communication is all about intent. If you want to communicate with something good, most of the time you'll communicate with something good. If you're trying to summon something bad, you're gonna to talk to something bad. But this board itself it is not evil or bad. It is just a board, it's just a communication tool. Now, I don't use them that often on investigations. One, because I don't have very good luck with them. I really haven't gotten any good responses through them. And two, um, as you can see, it's big. It's, I don't like to travel with this or carry it around with me. This specific one I got on Etsy. It was custom made, I think in Ukraine. And I really only got it because it looked cool and I just wanted it to put it on display. I don't, I don't even use it, it's just, a piece of art kind of. But I like to tell people that a Ouija board is no different than spirit dice or a spirit box or an EMF detector or dowsing rods. They're all the same. They are all communication tools. So you could get something evil or I shouldn't even say evil. I don't like the word evil, bad. You could get something bad using dowsing rods. You could get something bad using spirit dice. You could get something bad using a spirit box, but it's all about intent. And you know, just go into a place to investigate with a positive mindset. Make sure that you have yourself protected. Make sure that you have a healthy mind and body before you go in and investigate. And I've never had any problems. You know, I, I did, like honestly, I've, I've never been hurt while investigating. I've never been threatened or nothing. And if you still don't believe me and you think Zozo's real, well, that's your prerogative. You have the right to believe that. But I'm gonna make fun of you and judge you. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna make fun of you and judge you. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed going through all of my equipment with me. Um, like I said, I'm working on the monster video and I'm working on the collabs with um, Cryptid Hunter and Caitlin Jane. I think you're really going to enjoy the places that I'm going with them. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't already, make sure and hit that subscribe button. Make sure and hit that like button because it really does help us out. And I'll see you really soon. Bye guys.